Hi, everybody. Welcome to today's TWI Talks. I'm not going to call it After Chapter Discussions. Astira can suck it. Uh, <clears throat> we're going to be talking about Chapter 10.08, the latest release from uh, Pyrodama that came in two parts. Technically, it's two chapters, 20,000 each. 40,000 words. Uh, Pirate wrote it in two days and then delayed their launch, and it was a whole big-ass thing, and it revealed that uh, Pirate Abba decided to fuck with us, and the Eren that we've been seeing for the past ten chapters is Neri. It's been revealed! It's been confirmed, at least for those people who are still in den not in denial. Um, and uh, Nier's got to have a hot tub scene with uh, a sheep that got transformed into a person. That was fun. So we're going to get started. We're going to talk about what people thought of the chapter very quickly. Uh, and then we're going to move on to... <clears throat> sorry. We're going to move on to the next set of like the questions you guys have. Sorry. I'm, I'm also looking at folks uh, talking about things. So if you want to talk about your general thoughts, what you thought, or your reaction to the chapter, to the twist reveal, and what's happened, ping me now in, um, in the ACD reactions and comments channel, or you can type whatever you want me to say. Uh, we only have two volunteers right now, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to vamp a little bit. Um, until folks have uh, filled out, and then we'll, we'll get started. I will... All right, Quill has volunteered to be the first person to speak. <laughs> I thought I've expected that, to be honest. Uh, full meme, nose banged a sheep, hilarious. Did he, though? Yes! Yeah. He did. It's hilarious saying it. He did. Nah, it was implied, but uh, look, nah, nah. I the... don't. I don't think. Look, nah. it doesn't matter if he did or not. As far as we are concerned, he did. <laughs> you conquer one. You conquer a continent. You build a thousand people. You cut. You see the faces gnomes, but you bang one sheep. And what are you known for? He's a sheep fucker. He's, He's well. He He's did well. not. He's a Welsh, we you go. know that. That's it. Yeah, that's it. That's, we know uh, what he is. All right, I'm, I'm overvoted here. He did fuck a sheep. Go <laughs> on. Either he's <laughs> okay. So Quill has introduced the sheep fucking, uh, and we will move on to less um, strange <laughs> topics. How about Mister Europe? You you take it up, and then um, oh, I'll introduce my stuff, and then we'll do Yash and Bleach. So go for it. Uh, yeah, I love the chapter. Uh, the uh, just slow and steady, like hints and realizations over the course of the chapter that yes, this is in fact a hundred percent real, and uh, just managed to get a lot of great character moments in despite the overall plot, which I thought just was really nice. Uh, the whole like how it was written, how the characters interacted, and just everything after the big climax of last volume. It was just nice to get some real forward movement a person or a sheep with a mission. I guess. Uh, wow. Yeah. I I I, I, that, I guess it, it was good to know about that. And you want to talk about your reaction, and then I'll, I'll lead in the. Um, I can do that. I'm still a little bit in denial because after I read it the first time in my head, I thought it's uh, I, I thought it's like Erin is lost. She isn't. She isn't just herself. That. She is like, I don't know, like more just in her edge lot face. But then I read it again and again and again and I just didn't want to believe, but now I do and 
to it, it it makes sense it it uh it just makes sense we know Aaron changed but nobody can change that much that um the things she did there the way she behaved even the way she she fought i mean Aaron is a capable fighter but the way she fought in the battle was a bit too competent in my in my eyes so it makes sense it's not Aaron and I, I guess that's the the focus of the chapter the end result of the chapter but what did you think of the way pirate developed things um did you like the way they set it up did it feel like you were getting enough clues that you were suspicious quickly or did you have to have someone like convince you to get get there get there Somebody had to convince me because um, I firstly there there were not enough clues. I mean there could have been enough clues, but Pirate often has like pulled a rug under people and has written characters who like change suddenly to a bit too sudden. And I thought it's just a case of that again that Aaron truly has entered the edge lord phase. And I just, I had no idea. No idea at all. And the setup for the reveal was perfect, in my opinion. Um, we'll do Yash next, if you're up for it, Yash. Yeah. Um, so I think Erin is still tiny. I don't think, uh, I think, you know, the... Fairlings are also keeping it a secret, but I think we have a Ratatouille situation going on, guys. And I'll tell you exactly you, why. Wait, wait, wait. What do you mean by Ratatouille situation? You think someone's, um, you think there's like uh, an invisible sheep on top of this airy? No, the that Aaron is controlling like Neri. Oh, what do you mean? Either there is a Freaky Friday situation going on or a Ratatouille situation going on. But I think the transform was cast on Neri. Mm -hmm. But Erin is somehow able to communicate with her. Uh, you know, dictate her movement, tell her what to do. Because how will she know the Billy Joel song? And she was singing it. Well, now if she was a sheep, how would she know it? I mean, mm -hmm. she wasn't really singing from what I remember. She was dancing with them. No, she sang. She sang, and she, she sang. sang good. Okay. She, sang. she, she did sing. Nias uh, was surprised and then not surprised about how good a singer she is. And it's small mm -hmm. stuff like this that really confuses me with the end. So I think Erin might be Fairland sized but there are two Erins. Okay. And, oh. Yeah. And the one that's going... That's growing big and small and all of that. That, because ima I, I'd imagine that would be easier on like a creature that cannot level as opposed to somebody who can. Huh. Yeah. Um, okay. Okay. And I don't think I don't think Nia's like she fucked. Please no. I think I think <laughs> the Erin that he met in the hot tub was Erin Erin, not Neri Erin. Please no. This is my ship, guys. I can't I can't deal with new Down. sheep fucking. You'll he, the sheep fucker will still get with Erin eventually. So I don't even think Erin would do that. She's she would be <laughs> way too shy to do that. To just okay, jump in a tub with somebody, I guess. Oh, yes, that that might. No, no, so no I she would do. I, I have a theory for it. Yeah, I could definitely see her jumping in a tub with somebody. That's not a problem. I just wouldn't see her doing it half naked. Um, I think she would because that might be the paxier part of her. Wine, come on, guys. Erin doesn't drink, but wine, something stronger in the tub. That's paxier's influence on her. I think Erin would. I think I'm gonna uh, read. Uh, I'm gonna read off a couple of responses to your comment about the Aaron. Uh, sorry, Neri knowing the words of the song, um, and then we'll we'll move on to Bleach Soul. So you're on deck, Bleach Soul. Uh, Artsy 
says she didn't, Artsy Nana says she didn't know it, but they practiced before they came out of the room. Um, Liquid Ender says, when you don't know the words to a song, someone tells you the word. That's all that happened. Uh, Mike, Mike, Mick, or Mike says there is a quote of Nary singing. I saw it earlier in Patreon spoilers. It was with Num Tongue, and she was on key at the time. Um, Happy Panda says, Naren knows the song, also the Elven Weapons. There is definitely a bond. I go with Familiar Contract, because Aaron is a witch. Um, Ooh. That, that, might, that might be a possibility to consider. I got that interesting idea. Uh, and... Uh, Bleach Soul, you're on deck. You're good. Go for it. Still there, Bleach Soul? Mike issues? Can you hear me? Yes, we can yes. hear you. All right. If if Aaron is actually Neri, I hate it. I abhor it. I despise it. <laughs> It does not look. It does not make a lick of sense to me. It doesn't make any kind of plot sense or or any kind of character sense or anything at all. It's just it's and it's actually ret- retroactively destroys the Aaron chapters in this volume, all of them. It's it's just it. Uh, I mean, there are the, there are so many things that it it, it shouldn't work. You know, so, some people are talking like how uh, how uh, Neri gonna. Uh, get levels now because people respect her, even though she's Aaron and and shit. Even though, yeah, I I just hate I hate it. I absolutely hate it. It's like zero out of ten. Okay. And I don't think it makes any sense whatsoever. And how the hell would Neri know the dance that Aaron has done uh, for the Lucifer? And she well, did. A... She does it. Uh, yeah. yeah. So uh, I mean, let's address she... this. Hang on, Bleach. Let's address this first up. A lot of the folks on like the Discord and stuff don't take them too seriously. Some of what they say are so out of pocket that I'm I've stayed out of the conversation because it it literally like sets me on fire how silly it seems. Take it from this perspective. The reveal isn't as shocking when you consider like we've been assuming a lot of the changes to Aaron that we that that's like shown and a, a lot of the odd bits where she's falling over where her aura doesn't seem as strong where she's not using any of her skills or abilities we've been writing that off right because Aaron just came out of a big thing she explains she doesn't want to do things her distance from um fr- like keeping her distance from the in crew all of these things again we keep assuming it's because she has a mission she has something she wants to do And over time, that's how it's been developed. But if you flip it and say that, yes, the choice of the sheep being transformed into Aaron is weird, but the concept of maybe somebody body doubling Aaron and sort of drawing all the ire of folks to this body double and away from the real Aaron, does that seem like an out-of-pocket idea to you? Uh, maybe not entirely, but I I just I just hate Neri B. Aaron because okay, that, uh, I mean that, I mean that's I fair. mean I mean I mean like there are some things that really irks me like uh, mm-hmm. you know like the th- do you have it's 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 hard to find specific yeah yeah I I have I have specific thing I I think yeah. you know like. In the in the last volume, like the end of the volume, I didn't. I don't even think Neri should have been. I mean, like, like narrative wise, I I'm not sure. I I mean, like character wise for Eren or narrative wise, Neri shouldn't have been with her on a ship, for at all. For as as far as I'm concerned, and narratively, you know, and like in this, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Like, why why Neri specifically, and why uh, and you know, it. I mean, it doesn't make it doesn't make sense. Wait, 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 wait. Hang on. Narratively, okay. So let's let's. No, look, I, I, to be honest with you, I think the nerdy thing done for shock value and not for any kind of character or plot development. Fair. That's a fair critique. Now mm-hmm. I have a question. When you say narratively, 
are you, we, we need to define what you mean by narratively, because I think I'm thinking yes. of it a little differently from you. When I think about narrative, I think about the sequence of events, the flow of, um, the flow of the story, the way the characters build on each other, the way things fall together. When you're, what do you, that's how I think about it in narrative sense. From because, that point of view, yeah. I don't see the, the inclusion of the sheep as a big deal because originally you think, well, she's just along for the ride and she's there and she sort of snuck in with the group that was trying to help Aaron and she had her own reason for there because she has her own motivations, which are um, tied to the attempt by the Sariot lambs to pass their exam, their leveling exam, whatever the hell that is. And her side and her genuine side deal with um, Aaron and all those things that were established in prior chapters from that sequence of events. It makes sense to me. Are you saying that it doesn't make sense from that at all? Yeah. Yeah. No, I'm saying that for instance, Everyone who has a who has a class or stuff, they don't. When you tell them about the system and uh, how to succeed, nobody will understand them. No, because you know they're gonna hear like something of a blur. That's when uh, Ryoka tried to talk to Aaron about it. Uh, Aaron didn't hear what Ryoka said. So, so narratively, Ryoka should be the one who's helping Neri, not uh, not just uh, you know uh, impersonating Aaron or whatever happen i think like uh you know like shastriel and ryoka and you know and neri they are like uh, they have like understanding of this they have understanding of the issue erin does not understand the issue and neither anybody else who has a class for that matter either That's, even Syria, that doesn't it, make sense either for me because th- this is this doesn't necessarily this doesn't have anything to do with the um like not people not understanding the leveling stuff this is she was present for an event for her own reasons and it made sense that she was pr- like she could be present for the event no for mm-hmm. instance i don't understand why neri was on the ship instead of namtang so namtang well, was, has, because has namtang been... chose not to go oh, this is, uh, we are we are talking about st- i mean it's all a bit it ties in within the chapter of course but it's uh, a discussion for something that was and not exactly like for the current chapter. Yeah, I can I understand. Under- I can totally understand why you would think that um, this being Aaron, uh, this being Neri, makes no sense. Um, from the way Neri did stuff, she was too. She never was in a human body. Was way too competent was way too good at impersonating her. I I can see why you think that this doesn't make sense. Um, there were little hints, maybe, because, for example, I always thought, why didn't she use... She didn't use her fire. She couldn't use her, her, her witchy head. Uh, but, but it I, was explained by, I, I think, like, because she lost her wonder at the moment because of the she trauma. She lied. She she yeah. lied because she couldn't do that. She was just I mean, this is the little hints where in my head now comes clear that it really wasn't Erin because she didn't use her her all of her abilities while fighting, for example. Yeah. So yeah, that yeah, was but, planned, but I can see again why you think it doesn't make sense. Yeah, but I, what 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 what's really jarring to me is how for instance uh Aaron or Neri has made has done a deal with Paxir, and Paxir wanted to do it with uh, with Aaron. Like she, they tricked uh, the Lucifer system, the truth who should be balanced with everything. So uh, Paxir got a, 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 a freaking sheep uh, soul instead of Aaron. Well, that, so that one also like that one also makes sense if you. So first, in order to get into the room, they had to ask um, Vesifisen. The, the former Viscount Vesivison to open the door for them. And there was a hint that when he looked at the quote unquote Aaron slash that's actually Neri, he thought he was very confused uh, before he disappeared. And yeah. then within the room, the room only enforces the truth. It doesn't like stop you from making yeah. um, misconceptions. 
Okay, like, the truth is that Aaron, uh, Paxir meant, uh, thought that Aaron owed, owed them a favor because no. of her. Uh, yeah, she yeah. owed them. I, I mean, it was it's still there in the text. Uh, well, Paxir yeah. thought she, here's, she owed them. Here's the thing. That has nothing to do with the deal that they made. Uh, that's yes, what I'm trying to say. You know, what I'm trying to Here, say is that Paxir wanted Aaron told because, yeah. Bleach. Let me Let me finish this. So Paxir made did not know that that wasn't Aaron. Couldn't tell that that wasn't Aaron. So made it, she made an assumption that the person in the room with her is Aaron. And Neri did not correct her and never tried to or said anything about her identity. And because of that, the room never tried to enforce anything to force Neri to acknowledge her own identity. And during that entire time, Paxir is assuming this is Aaron Solstice that I'm dealing with. So all of her, like, she's she's trying to do tricksy deals. She's trying to convince Aaron Solstice to make another deal with her. Yeah, and you she know that... Some... She made an assumption. She walked into the room, and Neri just let her go with the, uh, with the assumption, and then was like, yeah, I'll take this, but never corrected her assumption. Yeah, and you know, and that's what why it's so nar- narratively weak, because usually it's... Uh, it's uh, you know the uh, the exchange thing and you know the 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 the, the scale and that stuff you know if um, if Faxir thought it was Aaron and it was not Aaron though it shouldn't then the scale should not have tilted in the Aaron uh, direction it's actually it's narratively extremely weak I think because you shouldn't because be tricking the system that like that the, the scale but the the scale only measures the deal being made it doesn't test the veracity of what's going on. So Neri was offering something. She wanted power. She wanted this. She na- like each step makes sense after the fact. Okay. I've, I've, I said a little arm. I think we've discussed this quite a bit. You're welcome to keep going with folks. This is very fascinating. And I think it's, it's good to examine the weaknesses and strengths of the narrative plot line and whether it's good. But I think, uh, we'll, we'll wrap this up. Thank you so much for talking, Bleach Soul. And I hope you guys keep talking about this because I would love to know what everyone else's thought is. This. And there is actually a lot of responses to you. So I'm going to go through the responses and then we'll get the last two people in, Red Ink Quill and Cerver, and then we'll wrap up this section and move on to questions. Um, so first up, we have Quill just said lies and slander. I don't know to what he's referring, probably me. Um, Almighty Nubs says, I don't think it's as, it's as simple as Neri being polymorphed into a copy of Eren. Um, there has to have been some sort of exchange of knowledge for Neri to know as much as she does. Uh, Happy Panda says, it's only eight chapters in and only three chapters have Eren in it. So for me, it does not destroy anything. And I can see some potential ways it can develop. Um, Mr. Europe decide, uh, like thumbs up and agreed. Decoy has always been important in chess as his last comment. Cool. Reddit Quill says, I think that we have been a skewed understanding of the flow of the story because we are reading the chapters a week apart. In the end, people will be reading them continuously. And presumably Red Ink is referring to the fact that the continuous stream of chapters will make it, will we'll change the, um, the perceptions folks have when they read it. So maybe the impact is a little different. Uh, it is only three chapters. You move on to the next one very quickly. That makes sense. Um, Dart time wise uh, uh, punned and um, needs to be punished for it. But narratively, I can't believe I had to read that out loud. Actually, Kermit <laughs> says nice. Neri well, has at least. <laughs> actually, Kermit says Neri has an incentive to tank Aaron's notoriety because she's trying to speed run the trials of leveling. Aaron is provoking a lot of strong reactions from high level people now, and that's what Sarian Lambs need in order to pass one of the three trials. So Neri is trying to steal Aaron's notoriety because even bad reactions from the world will still help her people. Reddit Quilta says is in response to that she needs fear, respect, and or love. She got love from Nears. It's what she needed. Quillman says Ryoka is actively helping Neri? Question mark actively covering for her in the chapter and passing info that Neri doesn't have. 
that might be true. She might have seen something and we're, we're not quite aware of it. There was some indication that there was some suspicion from Ryoka and she did sort of throw some bones at Neri in the conversation where she goes like crossbow bolts. You're you, you got hit by like covered for the crossbow bolt. But, um, Redding Quill says Ryoka was in on helping the lambs. She has no level. So she's able to comprehend the effort possibly. Happy Panda says, technically, Ryoka should also be helping the goblins because the Fae told her. She started sticking to Tyrion instead. She's useful when it comes to, um, okay. She used, she's useful when it comes to important stuff. I'm not sure how that ties in, but sure. I refuse to, uh, okay, this is going to be, this is going to, six, six, Sixel Sideroy says, I refuse to believe Ryoka is actively helping. She'd accidentally reveal it in five minutes. Which is probably why Shastro didn't clue her in. Quillman says she doesn't know what she's actually helping with, but she is covering as instinct. Kainia says, I prefer it if it is Neri. I don't know if everything that happened makes sense if she is. Some things should get explanations, but the main thing that bothered me was all the rage Paxir sensed. Even with everything with the slavers, I don't see Aaron as someone constantly in rage. I would prefer if Aaron managed to keep herself from changing so much that even in her determination increases, but we shall see how it develops. I I did... L- I agree. Yeah, I, I, agree. I would say the defining characteristic for Aaron is grief. Sadness. I mean, even mm-hmm. Maviola mentioned that, uh, like, the system literally noped out of her emotions rather than face that level of grief. So rage is probably not as big for her. I, I thought at the moment when I read it that it was, um, I passed it off as, oh, Aaron's changed a lot. Maybe she's angry about stuff yeah. now. But late, but now in retrospect, it makes much more sense. Uh, the Dark more, Tower. go ahead. The more uh, you think about it, the more little hints just came, come, come, um, are coming up, are coming up. The refusal of playing chess. Mm-hmm. Of uh, of not using fire in her fight, of not yep. using the witch's head. The way even her, more... the way the literal master of auras is like your aura is weak. You don't have anything, mm-hmm. and that that's not true for for from what we know about Aaron. Um, okay, Dark Time Wise says Aaron has the pavilion now, though she can retain knowledge of the trials. Uh, Action Kermit says again, lying by omission is possible in the Lucifer deal room. Paxia tried to trick Naren into surrendering her soul in the afterlife as well as in life, and that worked until Neri explicitly called it out. Paxia had, uh, Mr. Europe says Paxia had secrets as well that she kept out of the deal so the scales wouldn't tip. Uh, Artsinata says, I think people underestimate Neri just because she is a quote unquote sheep. Um, Bleach Soul, in response to Action Kermit, says no notoriety won't help her because it's Aaron who is notorious, not Neri. Um, Super Bread Ninja, in response to Kainia, says Aaron was filled with an ocean of rage as far back as Volume 1 when Cal Ruse was training her in 1.56. Yes, that's true, but things change. Um, we're going to wrap up any more um, comments on this. And we'll let the two last speakers go. So, Red and Quill, you're up. And then, Sir Bear, you're on deck. I thought that uh, the whole Neri being Aaron was actually, like, really shown even early on. Like, the Freylings were saying that, oh, you weren't, you were unintelligible and crawling around on your hands and knees when you first got here. And there was some lamp, weak as a lamb comments thrown around. So, mm-hmm. I think it was, it was, it was, uh, was really well foreshadowed. Also, she calls uh, Goblin it. She pricks her finger on a crossbow bolt. I just thought that Neri being Aaron was annoying in terms of, oh, she's she's giving the wrong impression of who Aaron is to all these important characters. And that that's how I felt about it. I didn't think it was weak narratively. I just was annoyed with, oh, you know, Geneva is not liking... <laughs> Aaron when she really would or you know the UN people aren't impressed with her so yeah that's how I felt <laughs> <laughs> that's that's fair and and yeah I had a similar reaction where I had to when I originally saw the theory um it, it 
like immediately caught my attention, uh, like a few days before the chapter even came out, um, or when when Pirate was streaming before the first stream for Pirate uh, for the la- for the latest chapter. And I had to sit down and think about it and go back over all of the pieces of information that just didn't fit in my mind for how I saw Aaron developing. And then once you start interrogating those assumptions that you keep making and those excuses, you realize, oh, Aaron is not, Aaron visited a city of Frailings and she was, the best she could pull out was talking to somebody and saying, prepare for the next time things are bad. Yeah. <laughs> like, where's the wonder? She's like, oh, I haven't experienced any wonder. What are you talking about? You what the fuck? City. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and then Aaron is around a bunch of Earthers and sure, her reaction to them is, I gotta go. I got a jet. I can't talk to you. I uh, can't talk to Aaron Solstice, the girl who stopped everything so she could talk to uh the guy who makes her she, for she mental loves parties meat. you know <laughs> like what the f- even as Aaron Solstice, who's been categorically traumatized over the course of a year over and over to the point where she is basically a well of sadness at, and still manages to have moments of joy and connection yeah. with people that Aaron is saying I gotta go I got a jet I got oh. stuff to do and Aaron's like oh I don't want to, I don't have time to play chess right now <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> one that more and more and and that's it the more and more you think the... about it the more and more you think about the small scenes that happens the more uh, it comes up that pirate just trolled everybody yeah, yeah. And they did it really well at, at least yep. the troll so too. Uh, now the, uh, the biggest thing that actually got me was that I was I was primed for it, and then I saw Nary use like a phrase or a word that I have never heard thought would come out of Aaron's mouth. I can't remember what it was at this moment, but she sounded very like English highfalutin. I'm talking to a lord, and I'm like, when the fuck has Aaron ever said that? Yeah, she also Aaron. kept on cursing like dead gods, which I don't oh, think is God. a curse that Aaron uses. I think she does now. Does she? I, yeah, I that's the like ambiguity of it because they make sure to say dead gods because they don't want to give the gods power. Remember after? Yeah, the yeah, whole, but I don't think Aaron uses dead. I don't. I think she I've understands seen, it. I don't think she uses it in her dialogue. That's that a could very, be like okay. that's a very or, or, in or, world. <laughs> before we start, like the feeding frenzy, surveyor has something to say. And I don't oh, yeah. I really want to give him a chance. Go on, Sir Bear. Oh, God. How do I begin? Okay, for, first of all, I think it's, it's been acknowledged. It's not Aaron. Shall uh, 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 confirm it? Foriana, uh, Foriana confirm it? Ryoko confirm it? All those people confirm it. It's not Aaron. But I don't believe it's necessarily N- uh, Neri. What? Oh God! This this is gonna. I I thought. Uh, was gonna uh, uh, she, is she gonna end up? Uh, to la, no, to la, uh, I would I would put forward multiple theory, uh, not just those. Uh, uh, so, some people are thinking about at the at the end of the uh, epilogue and the battle. There's multiple things that that could have changed uh, Irene or could have created the whole situation. First of all, there's Sylvania with the uh, with started the whole Neri stuff. Sylvania did some magic spell, did all all the, all the thing you can imagine to make uh, an an in the shape of Erin and all, and all of that. Th- there's the there's the fact that uh, Erin got for uh, level level 50, 50 got two two skill, two, two powerful green skill that we don't know really the effect. It could be implied that the theory is uh, Terrian VC is maybe the box, maybe one of the four bucks that we don't know about, or maybe it's the aspect of <sighs> the inn somehow we don't know. The aspect of the inn. Uh, the, the I mean, other... we had okay. I think out of the theories, uh, I'm, I'm, I... I'm, not, I'm not finished. I have two other more. Wait. I know, I know, I know. Well, well, one second. I just out of the theories, I think if it is a Naren, the best one for. From my perspective, is that it's um, it's Sylvania planted someone. That was the best. That was the best one I liked. This is a thing. 
That's the fifth one. Then that's the first one. Yeah, that Sylvania planted someone. Yeah. Go. You had two more theories. Go on. Yeah. The other. For a whole month, an entire month, Erin ate of fairy flower honey. You know fairy flower, the stuff that created Oniva, the stuff that changed people in this perspective, the 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 stuff that that create whole entire person personality in all of that stuff. So maybe it's a, a fairy Oniva situation where that Erin doesn't does doesn't remember it's Erin in all of that. And it, it took the personality of Aaron, uh, Aaron ready for war, uh, raging and all of that, that people keep saying her. And the, the, uh, the, fourth, the fourth theory, that one is complicated. I, I'm not an expert on that, one, on, on that subject, but it could be a dissociative identity. identity. Uh, I don't remember the last word. Disorder. Dissociative identity disorder caused by trauma because Erin uh, suffered a lot of trauma near near Mancernet and all of that. But I'm not an expert. I won't, I won't talk on that subject. Okay. Um, I think that, that covers all the side theories about mm-hmm. him not yeah. actually being there. Yeah, literally everything I saw on the Discord and Reddit. Yeah. Uh, but thank you, Server, for including uh, the, the possible alternatives. Um, I'm going to go with Quillman's reaction to this. It's nary. Anything else is pure and utter coping. Like, if you need copium, go for it. But it's it's nary. <laughs> That's my opinion. It's my opinion, guys. Don't, don't, it's just my opinion. I um, just hope you get a satisfactional uh, explanation. <laughs> That's all I want. I, I'll say um, from the way Pirate was talking on the end of stream and stuff, and like the things that they've been chatting about, I think they're gonna do a, an Aaron chapter, a big Aaron chapter, like a real Aaron chapter, not like Naren mm-hmm. before they leave for the break. But here's the problem: I'm afraid because every time they put a chapter together before they leave on a break, it's always a cliffhanger. <laughs> How much more cliffhanger can it get? So yeah, I'm just like uh, I can take uh, so much. I can only take so much. Um, okay, so that was a, a lot of reactions to the chapter. There, there's been some conversation in the reaction channel, so I'm going to read some of this out. Mm-hmm. And then, um, Ed, you want to pick the uh, first question from the list? We'll I can do that. Just yeah. Uh, yeah, take your time me, with reading out just, the... Just post it in the reactions channel and give people a chance to um, think about mm-hmm. responses. Okay, so... Um, blah blah blah. Aaron is okay. Mockery Jones says, When Aaron, uh, when the um, when Naren is revealed, Aaron will harvest is gonna harvest a whole farm of wonder. Wonder when that reveal goes public. Uh, Sifsir says, if we want more evidence for Naren, Sylvania went around and helped out all of Aaron's friends lost at sea. We saw it with Pisces and Kulth. There's no reason to... Well, Pisces, Kulth, and um, Yvlan. And probably she nudged the um, the giant iceberg that is Syria to the right place. So all of them. Uh, there's no reason to assume she wouldn't help out the murder sheep who killed a dozen people during the battle. <laughs> And there's always a question of why Sylvania turned Neri into Eren. But here's the catch. Sylvia, Sylvania can talk to animals. She talks to Renew as a cat. That actually is true. She does have the ability to talk to animals. And there is the other aspect of, like, anytime you include a wizard... I don't know if anybody knows this, or if anybody remembers this. There's a, um, a, a rule, a TV tropes rule, the wizard did it. In this case, the wizard did it for the wandering in is Sylvania, and she's literally there. So her putting her finger in the pie makes it very murky. And um, I hoped it was a little bit more um, like open ended, and but nope, I think it was complicated, and I think that there was more than just 
uh, Sylvania involved in this. Somebody planned this out, and I don't think Sylvania did it. She's not a planner. She's a blow-upper. Uh, and let's not forget, there is a harpy queen involved. And the, the demons and, like, so many other things. Um, if Sarah lands is trying to communicate with her, she's just going to cast a spell again, and then Neri can start making a request. So, yeah, so, Neri definitely could have communicated with um, Sylvania. Happy Panda says, more like fear, she made her sheep create a Palerosian company and made a continental war. Uh, fascinating room, no food or drinks for me, but here I am again. I felt I was not Aaron-like. Uh, yes, I guess. Uh, Mike, Mike says, condition the empty mind assigned is the other option for subversion involving Naren and not Aaron. Red Ink Quill says, what about all the Nary memes at the end of the chapter? Yeah, pretty much Pirate Abba is trolling us and confirming everything as best as they can. I'm, that's pro that's mostly why I'm going with this. Mike says, Papa loves to mock us. We fuel Papa's trolling. Other options like the box and Mecha Aaron idea. Uh, Happy Panda says, can't be a Sylvania plant. Aaron knows too much about forbidden stuff. Uh, Mr. Europe says, if it somehow isn't Neri, I stand by the idea that it's Nanette, and the Nanette in the inn is a sock puppet operated by ropes and pulleys. In my <laughs> mind, that makes as much sense as not being er Neri at this point. Sipsir so says, I did have a crazy theory that is Kasigna, that it is Kasigna, specifically the maiden aspect of Kasigna. Um, and Happy Pan and response to Mr. Europe says, no, I do not want to imagine Nanette fighting in a war, killing people, or taking a yeah. bath with a 50-year-old. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, so uh, the, the, question, the, next, the first question from our topics is posted. Um, what role with the labyrinth of the souls, what role will the Okay, y'all need to fix your grammar here. What role will the Labyrinth of the Souls play in this arc? Will we meet more elves? Super, this is from Super Bread Ninja. Um, and to give time for people to respond, hey, Super Bread Ninja, would you like to talk to us about what you think uh, the Labyrinth of Soul will play? What kind of role Labyrinth of Soul will play in this arc? Coming arc? I'm going to go, uh, Super Bread Ninja is typing! Um, I'll, I'll say some bit about it while the typing is going mm -hmm. on. Um, so, I think the lab, I, I, at first I was, like, super excited about this whole Balros arc because I thought one of three things would happen. Aaron would go on a, sorry, on a mission of mercy with, uh, Geneva to the Dyed Lands. And they would figure out what all these animals and these colored things are all about. And they would save the frailings there and possibly find the source of what causes the Dye Lands to be the Dye Lands. And it would be a weapon that they could use. And that was how she would level up and all these things would happen. Now I'm thinking maybe there's like a parallel pattern path where with the Labyrinth of Souls being the other goal. But I don't know. I don't really trust the labyrinth of souls i don't think it should be a big thing because the way it's presented if there are multiple Why? old ones it just does not how would they even be able to yeah yeah it, like it, it's still too too much of an end game situation it's like, even so remotely i mean he has shit his pants just talking about it so there's no way that we can remotely do anything with that right now and there is like Pirate does establish at the end of this chapter via um, Shastrel that the gods no longer have the ability to read fate or mess with fate. So they can't just wait for the right moment, appear to the right person, say the right seven words, and get what they want from them. That doesn't work anymore because of the way things are, are have been affected. So there's a chance for people to make choices that will like seriously affect the way things are going to go um super bread ninja's response to my question was to their own question was 
Uh, I'm guessing the goblins will have an adventure. They might get an advantage in clearing the Labyrinth of Souls as friends of the elves. That's not, that's an interesting theory. The goblins having an advantage or possibly even knowing how to get there. I mean, the goblins did help sort of navigate the Liscor dungeon. We know, we, you never know. And goblins are everywhere. Um, Okay. I'm going to go again. The, the Labyrinth of Souls is beyond name drank. And uh, how, I mean, even whole of Goblin Isle, Island would just die down there. I mean, maybe, how? maybe, but Goblin Lords like are a thing. Goblin Lords are a thing. Let's let let's let's um. Yeah. All right. Yeah. It's a it's a interesting idea, and I I would love to engage with them more, but we got a time crunchy thing. So I'm going to read through a bunch of comments, and then the first person to speak will be Quillman. So Sir Bear says one thing I forgot. The development of quote unquote Aaron in the last three quarters of chapters works narrowly for the box. Sla a comma honey or did DID theory and not for Nary faking being Aaron for three quarters of old chapters. I don't know what that is, but there you go, Sir Sir Bear. I, I read it out for you. Um going back to the question, Happy Panda says the labyrinth has a divine class weapon. So we needed to un- outdo Whiny and whatever plan she has with the eyes of Balros. True. Uh, but yeah, I feel like Karevia's curse will catch up this volume and Nears will fall at the climax. What does that have to do with the question? Ooh, Y'all are just yeah. like speculating horrible things. Calm down. Um, <laughs> uh, LOS could be the place where System Chan almost got erased. So yeah, it's potentially a super dangerous place. Mystical Pie says, I simply don't believe Naren or any of her allies are capable of penetrating the center. If I recall correctly, Naren said that he wasn't sure he could get there even with his entire... Nears said he wasn't sure he could get there even with his entire company. Sivseer says, Siv's thoughts, Soul Dungeon. Pirate likes to introduce a plotline and then start playing within, within four to five volumes time. We saw it with the Dungeon of Liscor. Pirate tells us there's an entire fucking city down there in Volume 5, and then we never mess around with it. The next time we see it is Volume 9. This isn't Volume 10 arc. This is a Volume 15 plotline. Pirate is lying, laying groundwork. Uh, and Artsinata says, Re-Goblins will play a part. Numtongue. Where is Numtongue? Hints, hints, hints. Soul Bard and all. Big journey. <laughs> I mean, I, oh, we know... Uh, Oh, maybe. Oh, yeah. Yeah, maybe. Like, I, I've been curious, too, but I, I thought I didn't think anything big would come of it. But who knows? Maybe he will, like, redeem himself and stop fucking three girls and so- picking bad partners for himself. Or maybe he's on a journey with that with what's her face, the sociopath, and he's going to murder people. So you never know, Artsy. He could go the dark route. He could become... He could fall from grace. <laughs> She's going to kill me. Craig. <laughs> She's going to kill Craig right now. <laughs> well, you're up. Yeah, um, I bit with, I bit, agree a bit with Siv that it's going to be not this uh, volume there. I don't mm-hmm. think volume 15. I think probably volume t- 11, 12. Mm-hmm. In terms of... It's obvious there's much more dangerous stuff down there than this Gore's dungeon, at least at we, as we currently see. From what we've heard, I mean, Mother of Graves, dangerous enough, semi demigod. Probably the same thing down in Dun- Dungeon of Souls, whatever it was called, Labyrinth of Souls. Mm. Labyrinth of Souls, yeah. Yeah. I just, yeah, it, I don't think it's going to play a part this volume. Probably. I don't think so either. I think it, it's the fact that Power has mentioned it means that inevitably they will use it. I just have, I just can't see how. Maybe yeah, they changed my mind, or maybe they have a different path. But if the right only way I could see it happening is if somehow Erin, not Erin, Erin comes back with some top secret info from the gnomes. Gnomes, mm-hmm. the gnomes, gnomes works fine. Gnomes, gnomes, whatever. <laughs> uh, that's the only way I could see it as being a sort of. Erin not even before in. 
before the labyrinth of souls. Oh, sorry. Okay, go for it. Before the labyrinth of souls is even uh, remotely being handled, we still have the crossroads. And uh, yeah, we still I don't know, crossroads. Crossroads and Newland. Crossroads. And that's before, something. Bef- before they can even hope to go down there, they need. Everybody needs to be at least level 45, 60, 50, 50, something like that, yeah. Or even higher, or, 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 or that, yeah. Yeah. Um, I was going to mention that uh, the fall of Celt also has to happen. So that's something to look forward to. All right. Yash, catch him, you're up, then Bleach Soul. So it's called the Labyrinth of Souls, but there are no souls. So maybe it died? Hmm. I don't know. Maybe Erin's already there. Maybe she's already going after their super secret Elvish weapon. That is actually, yeah, and that is a that is a brilliant oh. thought. Holy shit, yes. Maybe that's how she's being hidden from, like, Sylvania might actually have known, I mean, the ghost could have told her or maybe she figured it, like, maybe she went in. I, I, there might be an entrance we don't know about. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to see, like, an adventure with Erin. Or maybe yeah. Erin's already with, you know, her ship people. And she's on an adventure right now. And we're being the target. I mean, come on. It could be. It could be. That's actually. Re- I have to think about That's it a lot. Interesting theory. Yeah, I gotta think about it because I don't have a response right off the bat. I have to like. Think that is there, you know, trying to divert attention to herself as much as possible, so that her friends can live. Now, I'm just thinking maybe Erin's on the big grand adventure in the mm-hmm. labyrinth, and maybe the second half of this volume is probably. It's going to be all about that. Um, can someone help out Mike? Uh, or uh, he doesn't understand or uh, what what um, Yash just said. Okay, we're going to we're going to move on to Bleach and um, yeah, and then we'll do Mr. Europe you're up after. Go on Bleach so. Yeah, I do think uh, the the dungeon will shed maybe more light on the elves' histories. Uh, maybe uh, there is the last living elf at the center of the dungeon. Who knows? But uh, I think it should uh, shed more histories about uh, the elves and uh, and the half-elves and maybe goblins. Uh, uh, you know, like, if there is, like, any connection or any kind of uh, familiar uh, tree or whatever. But it should at least... Uh, at least have like lots of info about elves' history and uh, more information about them, uh, you know. And maybe that will be the great weapon that uh, can. Uh, after all, you know, the elf, uh, that elf lady, I can't remember her name. She fought beside the gods. Uh, so maybe the knowledge will give like a huge boost to with regards to leveling and whatnot. Yeah. That's mm-hmm. it. Interesting. <clears throat> it could be. It could be. Okay. So, um, Mr. Europe, you're up. Yeah, I don't think they will at all go to the Labyrinth of Souls. Like, I think they just won't go there. Uh, and the reason I think is is because it's one of the fundamental themes of the wandering in is that you go into dungeons, uh, you get close to the center, you find out some secrets, and then you forget about it entirely, and it's not brought up ever again. Uh, I think there might be some Belarusian bees uh, that might be fighting some of the dungeon, and we will spend some time on that, but that's the full extent of it, and uh, that's just it for the story. Mm-hmm. Okay, uh, that that cover that covers everything for this particular question. Um, I posted the next one up, uh, and it's from Mister Europe, so thematic. Goblins in Balaros. We saw Greydeath meet some goblins heading there ages ago. Do they have a plan, or are they just living their lives? Um, what do you? Th- and I'll 
add an addendum to this. What do you think those goblins that appeared? Because of course they're going to come back. What's what's going on with the goblins? Are they going to be? How are they going to be involved? Because technically there is one goblin we know in Balaros, and that's there's only one goblin we know in Balaros. That's Rabbit Eater, and we oh. it's been mentioned mentioned many many times in the last three or four chapters that goblins are killed on sight but we also know for a fact that they're absolutely goblins still alive oh bad arrow i forgot about bad arrow my bad bad and that's even worse because bad arrow is um is publicly a goblin and you have to also recall that the there is a goblin tribe the ghost tribe i forgot what the full name is that that's ghost yeah, Ghost Hand Tribe that's, that's around uh, that has yet to be returned to Israel by um, by Nears. So let's see what what that's all about. I what personally they refuse to. Why they refuse to? My bad. I personally think that there are even that there are a lot more goblins on Belarus than people even know, because what we have learned about. Uh, Goblins is that they are, it's, it's always been told, goblins are freaking everywhere, and uh, they adapt, they, um, they hide, and I think there are more goblins on Belarus than people know about, and um, I'm, I'm excited to see that, I mean... We have now uh, um, um, Rabbit Eater is now in Belarus, and I think he is gonna go meet these other goblins, probably, and uh, maybe we get some more infos about their condition on Belarus over over his storyline. Mm-hmm. So my my crack theory about all of this is that. Pirate is setting up to reveal that one, the goblins that uh, that tracked Aaron down, or quote unquote Aaron down in in the city, they're the ones from the Goblin Isle. I think it is true that most goblins were wiped out uh, by after uh, what happened with um, with Velen the Kind and all the inevitable end result of that. But mm-hmm. I think over time they have been like repopulating very, very carefully. And I think there's maybe, I mean, pirate used the classical like skinwalker, headhunter, goblin, where they they fuck around with that. And somehow this giant form like for Maryland sized goblin is also hiding out in the jungle. So clearly, Balaros has some hidden goblin tribes, and I think. They are where the real Aaron is going to end up. That was my original um, theory that uh, whatever is happening, whatever is going to happen, Aaron's going to end up in the hands of the real goblins. Hmm, and interesting. that's how this, that's what her adventure will start. And then it will be about finding those tribes and the, the people who find her will be attached to rabbit eater and um, bad arrow because they're the ones who will be able to finally like track them down. Uh, Samu, you're up, and then Quillman. So I'm pretty sure I know for a fact that there are a lot of goblins in Balaros because at the end of Volume 9, when uh, the, the ship with Rabbit Eater and Bad Arrow uh, is close to Balaros, they say that they see a lot of lights all around uh, Balaros. And I think uh, in the chapters before, during the fight on the Ships, it was already talked in terms of lights that Great F was like a formerly big light, but he's like fading a little bit. But uh, Ulvana and uh, Bad Arrow were like young lights or potential lights. And then when they get too close to Balaros, they see there's a lot of uh, lights all around. And I think it's oh. not just... Um, it's not just uh, goblins from the Goblin Isle. Because uh, I think now in that in the last chapter, uh, Niers also said that Velan had a bad um, relationship with uh, the goblins and Valor. So it's very likely 
that there's quite a few quite strong tribes still on Belarus from mm -hmm. uh, before VLAN and that they're not all wiped out. Because as we know, uh, the Goblin Witch also was in Belarus at some point. So we can expect that there were a lot of strong goblins during like young Vilan's time in Belarus. And I don't think the great companies could have wiped them all out. And yeah, because of all of this, I think that gob goblin culture in Belarus is much stronger and much older than in Israel for that matter. I mean, that's that I, I, I really agree. like that. I really, yeah, so really like that. You know why I like what you're saying? So, because we know for a fact that the elves were there, like, felt guilty, or at least the surviving elves felt guilty about the goblins. So, if the Labyrinth of Souls was built to protect the elvish souls, all these dragons ended up there. It's inevitable to think that somewhere along the way they did at least try to help the goblins. So, possibly there is a place where the goblins are protected by whatever they're doing. Because the interdiction spell that prevents people from thinking about the gods and almost ate the, the system was, is, we think, everyone speculates that it's located in the labyrinth. It could be elsewhere. We don't know because, you know, the, the system never really showed us the location. Um, okay, Quilbin, you're up, and then I'll read some comments and uh, we'll move on to the next question. Yeah, there's definitely goblins in Alaros that didn't go with Grey Death, uh, not Grey Death, uh, Velen to his death. I'm trying to remember the quote from Pemberag. But oh, yeah, because he could can't... say no, right? Right. Yeah, yeah, I can't remember the chapter, which I know is absolutely anti -festive. You failed. For me, I know I'm, a, I'm an absolute Quilipedia. failure. <laughs> I, I am a failure. Uh, I will it's okay. There. The fact that you even remember us makes you a winner. Um, but that's that's a really good point because the goblin lords specifically could say no. Grey Death has also implied that he's able to choose to answer the call of a goblin king or not. Um, so it's it's not fully just one thing or the other. Okay, I'm gonna read through comments and okay, I'm about to sneeze. Okay, sneezed. Um, Sir Bear, I know you want to speak. Well, I'll let you, and then we'll move on after that. So, Artsinata says, Hype for all the cool kids at some point secretly hanging out with the Balorosian goblin tribes. Happy Panda says, Then why did the two come to find Naren? Have they not found the real one? That's exactly what I, I think is happening, that they're searching for Eren, and um, those two found Naren instead of the real Eren. Sivseer says, ironically, I'm doubling down on what I said about the dungeon. I suspect the goblins won't do much this volume. Naren's isn't a goblin friend. She's not going to focus on them. It's like chess. If she can't walk the talk, she's going to gatekeep, gaslight, and girl boss an excuse to avoid it. Uh, they might interact with Rabbit Eater because he's a champion on the verge of being a goblin lord, but otherwise, they're just more gr groundwork being laid by Pirate for future volumes. All right, Sir Bear, you're up. Last comment on this question. Yeah. Uh, there's also the, the, the previous, I don't remember, I think it's Volume 7, vol Volume 7, where Gredat was on the boat with the Goblin. We were going to Baros to help and all of that. With Nier's comment, this chapter about pos possibly the, go the, go the Goblin knowing about the eyes of Baros and m maybe maybe a link with the experiment that the, the Jungle Tale fa failed. If that uh, near is trying to keep contained, maybe there's there's some sort of link with all of that that the the goblin are, are there with a plant and not just doing their their, their their life. They're there to do something in particular, and it's probably to fight to, to fight the lizard somehow. But, Good segue. Oh, still got more. But yeah, yeah, okay. I got a bit more, but. Yeah, pretty, pretty, that's it a bit. Uh, maybe Ghost and then try. But I will could fake being a Ghost and try member or something like that. Especially since but I was with them and uh, at the end of Volume Eight <laughs> before they were teleported. Okay, um, that's a good segue for me into the next question, that, which will be the wrap up question because we're hitting the hour and a half mark. What did the lizards? Uh, sorry, I think this is 
I'm going to rephrase it because it dramatically it's annoying me. What what did the Naga who did the Naga experiment on? What did they want from the kids? What did they want the kids to do? Written by Sir Bear. Um, so this is a good nightmare fuel uh, speculation. Uh, we can talk about what purpose the Naga were putting the kids to. And ultimately, like, why is Pirate mentioning it now? How is it going to be involved in the plot? Because if it could be groundwork being laid, but a bunch of kids in the wilds that are were being experimented on by the Naga. We don't even know if they're human, if they're other species, if if it's all one thing. Um, there's also the inevitable Yash, wrong channel. Um, the inevitable thought that we are now coming into the world of mass media and uh, quote unquote good reporting. What if somebody, some intrepid reporter, finds the kids and blames the ears? Like, I'm not going to go through the nightmare fuel possibilities, but because mostly because it freaks me out, it's just Pirate is very willing to go there. I'm just happy we didn't have to get a chapter about how the kids took care of the people who like experimented on them because cannibalism is not fun. Um, why do you ex- why do you go to cannibalism? <laughs> why do you even go there? Yeah, it's not even nobody confirmed. said a, nobody Are said anything. About Wait, is that is that not the first thought? Because that's the first thought I had. No, no, my first thought is they just killed them. Why would End they just it. kill? I mean, they're children. They don't know anything, so they create monsters, and monsters eat people. So maybe the uh. children turned ahead and ate them. Anyway. Uh, Quillman goes, Rashal shit. Got some real bad red classes. Everyone is going to help. I agree, like I said. Um, you guys are so innocent. You really don't think Pirate Abbott would, wouldn't go there? Okay, mm-hmm. Mystical Pie says, I thought they were doing eugenics to get greater forms more often. Maybe also to try and get some weird Rashal wishing well type classes. I think Pirate is mentioning as this as part of laying the groundwork for the eventual return of at least one of the eyes of Balros, the Nagas, and the problems that causes. That's a, this is a, I'm going to stop for a moment and also mention thing. The idea that the eyes of Balros are essentially uh, uh, an infinite energy source somehow uh, for magic, somehow that they can use to transform all the lizard folk into evolved Nagas. Okay. And the the dropping of the knowledge in this chapter that the the, the lizard folk have had the most world spanning empires. These are the Naga eyes are weird, right? This kind of level of power with something that just can be passed around this often, it's weird. It's weird that they can do this. It's weird that they have this level of power. It's weird that they still have these. I mean, they don't have them, but that it's still around. I don't understand how, what these eyes are. I really don't. Are they gifts from a god? Are they leftovers from an immortal? Who gave them? And also, everything about the Naga sounds a lot like they are co- like doing what, what do they call them? Uh, what is Rasvari? Not a worms. Like, they're acting like the descendants of worms and like forcing themselves on every, I don't know. It's, it's very weird. I don't understand the eyes and I wish we knew more about them. Happy Panda says it's probably what others speculate, forcing high class evolutions. Red in Quill says, I believe that the experiments were to turn niz- lizard folk into Naga intentionally. I'm presumably without the use of like powerful eyes. Siv Seer says, all I know is that if you want to know what the Nagas did to the children, you need to play Total War Warhammer as the Lizard Folk. Pirate loves that game, and the Lizard Folk units in that game might be used. Anyway, I hope we get more horrible mon- monsters like the Jared people in Pisces' interlude. I love pirate writing horror, hoping we get some fucked up shit. 100% we will. Um, Thank you. Quillman says, welcome to the Jarlands, squared people. <laughs> No, thank you. <laughs> Tato Lord says in response to uh, the eugenics comment from Mis- Mystical Pie, I mean, if the children 
went after the Nagas and not Nier's forces, and Nier thinks he can solve it, it doesn't sound like the Nagas made horror classes. Quillman, uh, that's a very good point, by the way, Tato. Uh, Quillman says, remember that Flo stows some of the secrets of how to become Naga. They may come up again one day. Copium. Wow. I'd forgotten about that. That is true. It also makes sense that it also is very weird that Nagas can just become Nagas because of a set of things, but the other evolutions require like it. it lizard folk are weird, and I wish Pirate would explain the biology of them. Like need to make more sense. Happy Panda mm-hmm. says, "Well, Nagas are always kind of associated with wishing gems, kind of like philosopher's stones in South Asian cultures." I do know that, but I thought that was La- Lamias, not Nagas. But sure. Uh, dark time wise, two spheres that cause lizards to mature. Maybe they're actually a different body part. <laughs> yeah. Balls. They're hey, balls. What's wrong with you people? Um, we're going to start off with, uh, like, I'm going to go back to forwards because I'm scrolling up. So, Sir Barry, you're first. Yeah, this is in my question. <laughs> now what, well? Uh, uh, this subject would be. Said this, this poly, this volume, because not even t- talk about seeing them. She, she, she want to meet, meet the kid, so it probably be, be touched upon this volume. So it's, so it, it's something we'll probably get more info about this volume, if uh, something else doesn't happen. So it's going to be a, a, a big mess, especially since Nyers is afraid of revealing that stuff, of putting that stuff to the public. He, he would prefer to unleash a, a, a bajillion tr- critter on the world than, than reveal that. So it must be really bad or maybe really dangerous. <laughs> Something like that, yeah. Um, it's, then it's, we... Oh, you good? Yeah, you good. It, it's something okay. so probably, uh, really insane. <laughs> it uh, has to be, yeah. Yash, you're up. Uh, I agree with the eugenic thing. I think they're just trying to uh you know unnaturally force them to level up but you know we get that kind of um deformation like deformed or you know things go wrong and you know a lot of experimenting happening and i think also it might have something to do with roshan in terms of experimenting on bodies experimenting with people because i don't know i don't know if you guys got the vibe but i got the vibe largely that lizard folk are seen as expendable. Like, the, I don't know. Like, I just got uh, a sense that their lives are probably not as valued as other lives on, in Baleros at least. So, I think that's what's happening here where for a variety of reasons, they were holding uh, whatever kind of experiments that People wanted to do, people wanted to learn about something, it was all being done there. And then um, there were a lot of powerful kingdoms involved, big conspiracy, huge. So that's why even Nears is trying to keep it like hidden because he doesn't want to take off like major players who may or may not be involved in this. Like, let's say uh, the Reinhardts might have, uh, who is this guy? Magnolia Reinhardts. Mm-hmm. father has all these blood experiments regis 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 yeah so this could have been one of the areas where you know they started experimenting with all of this because it happened eight years ago right which is around the time that regis also started doing all these kind of experiments <gasps> Bless you. i don't know if i can convince i can confirm that but yeah it seems to be that way mm. uh, anyway okay. <laughs> yeah but i think the value of the children in the story going forward is that Neri probably is acting as a spy and is probably relaying information to Erin. And Erin does, in fact, go there. The real Erin, not Neri. Like, mm-hmm. the real Erin goes there, rescues the kids or something like that. Something is happening and Erin's going to be involved and it's going to involve the kids. Yeah. Yeah, something's happening. All right. Uh, now we have Bleach Soul, and then we'll read off last comment, and that'll be a wrap for today's TDR. We'll do, like, final thoughts or something afterwards. Yeah, uh, you know, like everybody said, it's like force evolution, because, uh, you know, there is the Lamia to Star Lamia. Maybe they want to evolve the other species as well, or the other uh, 
uh, you know, uh, evolutions as well. As with regards to the eye, I actually found what uh, what the Cyclops said very interesting. That uh, you know, the eyes are magical and they have the best eyes. And we know that uh, the Cyclops' eyes and uh, uh, the well, they are like magical eyes, you know. So it seems to me like the the eyes are not like some kind of a manufactured stuff, but actually some actual eyes of lived species before them who had massive magical powers. Um, since uh, we know like the eyes can contain such power. Yeah. I like the. Much it. I I I did like how they talk about destroying the eyes. We have our world has five continents right now. I like that number. <laughs> I mean, there's always a chance that maybe the eyes were designed to be like anti god weapons and they're just left over or something. <laughs> okay, so that that concludes this question. Um, wait, is there a last comment? Oh, there was one last comment from Subs here. I do hope Nari helps the kids. That's her arc, this volume in my eyes. Nari doesn't respect her own greatest strength, making people love her. Sarians don't respect that, I feel. Neri needs to grow as a person, and now that she's had the massive power-up of not being a sheep, she needs to realize that Aaron's greatest strength has never been her insane natural talent for murder, but her kindness. The children is Neri's nat- challenge to learn the power of kindness. Here's the deal with this. When you are blessed with charisma, this is one of the most classical tropes in literature. Anyone who has the ability to charm, anyone who is notably given the ability to make someone like you. It is explicitly said in so many tales and so many lessons that those folks never develop empathy. They never understand love because for them to receive love, it's almost impossible because everyone will like them because of their power. So they know they never receive genuine love and they become, and oftentimes they become corrupted and, uh, quote unquote evil because of it it's such a cla- there's a there's a trope of the um silver tongued preacher uh, there's t- stories of the preacher with the silver tongue who goes to places and converts the masses and they all love him but he genuinely doesn't give a shit about any of them because they're because he knows that they just love him because of the way he speaks he doesn't understand real love because as far as he's concerned the only love that matters is the one that he can generate Everything else is just, like, shadows, and it's all fake, and he ends up, like, selling his... He sold his soul to the devil to get his silver tongue. Anyway, there are are lots of tales and stories throughout the world about that, and maybe the sheep are sort of a reflection of that. The idea that charm is both a, a power and also a sort of spoiler that makes empathy and and hu- um, like mortal connections and and the kind of joy that you get from like being with people, it just spoils it all. So, on that horrible note, um, thanks for coming, everybody. Uh, we're gonna do this again later in the evening for those who couldn't make it to this one. Uh, I hope you enjoyed yourself. Hope you got whatever you need to get out of it. I'm gonna end the recording now.